Hello everyone, welcome to session 5 of LTEC 620 Visual Design. If we take a look at our class Venn diagram, the past couple of weeks it's pretty clear we've been squarely on the left side focusing mostly on visual design. We've been talking about grids and grid systems. We've been experimenting with typographic hierarchy and typographic expression. And of course, we've been learning the nuances of messing around with color. This week, the pendulum is going to swing over to the visual literacy side of our Venn diagram. And specifically, I want to talk about concepts about graphics and notions of pictorial competence and the functions of pictures in text. Now, in order to do that, I want to set things up by talking about concepts about print. What are the concepts about print? Well, those concepts are the knowledge of how one reads print and books and how books and print actually work. It is a pre-reading skill that children develop before they even know how to read. So when we're talking about concepts about graphics and concepts about print, we're talking about young children, usually in the two, three, four age range, sometimes a little bit older. Now, here are some sample concepts students need to know and understand in order to be successful at reading. So for example, they need to know how to hold and open a book. They need to understand that books have parts, such as a title, an author, a back cover. They need to know that words are made up of letters, and letters in different orders make different words. They also need to understand that spaces separate words, and that punctuation can create different meanings to sentences, such as I am here versus I am here. So I wanted to talk about concepts about print as kind of a warm up to talk about concepts about graphics. And this leads us to the idea of pictorial competence. Believe it or not, there are many factors involved in perceiving, interpreting, understanding, and using pictures. And this is something that gradually develops over the first few years of life. So take a look at this research by Deloach and colleagues, and they're actually showing some infants here who are looking at pictures of baby bottles. And what's interesting about this and why I'm showing it to you is to highlight the idea that infants initially respond to depicted objects as if they were real objects. In other words, if you look at the first two pictures on the left and in the middle, those two infants don't realize that the bottle in the picture is a picture. And so they're trying to use their hands to touch and grab the baby bottle. Now, the child on the right is actually taking it one step further. Not only does he not realize that it's just a picture of a bottle, but he's actually putting his mouth down to the bottle to try to drink from the baby bottle in the picture. And so this is the concept of pictorial competence. And these children are so young, of course, they have not developed the idea of perceiving, interpreting, understanding, and using pictures. This is something they will learn as they move through life. Full pictorial competence involves both perceptual abilities and conceptual knowledge. So these are some of the perceptual and conceptual skills and knowledge that are part of pictorial competence. Now, this is so basic, we tend to forget about this. Now, I, I wanted to share all of that to kind of lead into the concepts about graphics that children learn as they are exposed to different visual representations. And there's actually eight different concepts that have been identified. So one of those concepts is related to action. And this is related to the idea that static graphics can be interpreted as dynamic action. That's one of the things they can show. So, for example, you could imagine a picture of a baseball player swinging a bat and you see the lines behind the bat representing the air being moved by the bat. In other words, that static picture, even though it's not moving, it can show dynamic action. Another concept is extension. And this is the idea that some graphics provide additional information that is not present in the written text that comes with it. So there may be more information in the picture than in just the text. 
Relatedly is the concept of importance related to graphics. And this has to do with the idea that some information in a graphic may be more important than other information. In other words, you have to learn to decode graphics to figure out what's important and what's not important. The fourth concept is intentionality. And this is the idea that designers or illustrators choose or create graphics to accomplish a communicative purpose within a larger text. The graphic is there for a reason. And this is something that students and children learn over time. Another concept is partiality, that not everything in written text must be presented in graphics. When working with text and graphics, there's some judgment involved in what should be represented as a graphic and what shouldn't be. And of course, some concepts are easier to represent as a graphic than other concepts. Another important concept is permanence. And this is the idea that graphics in printed text are permanent and they will not change over time. And of course, that sounds completely obvious to us as adults, but again, this is something that children need to learn about graphics. The seventh concept is related to relevance, and this is the idea that usually graphics and written text are relevant. This is especially true in picture books or story books. It's also true in textbooks that children will encounter in school, as well as things they will encounter in the real world, such as movie posters or street signs. The graphics and the text are are typically related. And the final concept is representation. Illustrations and photographs represent objects, but they don't have the same physical properties as those objects. Now, believe it or not, it takes quite a bit of time to develop concepts about graphics. And so here is a study from 2013 focusing on 60 children in the pre-K through grade 3 age range. So in a minute, I'm going to show you some bar graphs by grade. And the graph is a stacked bar graph. And basically, the legend highlights how many concepts about graphics the children actually understand. And you can see here in the legend that there's actually four categories. Students who have full acquisition of zero to two concepts, students who understand three or four of the eight concepts, five and six, and then finally all seven to eight concepts. So here are the results. Take a look at pre-K. That's the left bar. You can see that three of the children in the pre-K level, which means typically they're about three or four years old, only understood zero to two concepts. Seven of the students understood three to four concepts, and two of the children actually understood five or six of the concepts. Now, let's go all the way to the right and look at third grade. Even by third grade, when children are typically, let's say, eight years old, maybe becoming nine years old, only five of the 12 students assessed actually had full acquisition of all eight concepts. So the point is, is that developing concepts about graphics takes time and should be done with intention. This is something that we want to keep in mind in, in general when we're designing visual representations, and in particular when we're designing visual representations for children. This brings us to the idea of the different functions pictures can have in text. One of the functions that pictures can have in text is that of decorational. This is simply the idea of decorating the page and has little relationship to the text content. And you can see here on the right, I have a children's worksheet called Odd or Even Coloring. And the directions say, color the odd numbers red and the even numbers pink. This is probably some kind of Valentine's Day worksheet. But as you can see, the hearts and the pictures of the children are simply decorational. They have no relationship to odd or even numbers. And so they're simply there to decorate the page. Another function of pictures in text is representational. And the purpose of these pictures is to mirror part or all of the text content. And so here is a screenshot of a children's book. And let's take a look at the text first. And it says, look, said one of the water bugs to another. One of our colony is climbing up the lily stalk. Where do you suppose she is going? Question mark. And then, of course, you can see the water bugs down at the bottom 
bottom of the lily stalk and they're kind of looking up. In other words, there's a mirroring here between the dialogue in the text and what we actually see in the picture. So that's an example of the representational function. Another function of pictures in text is organizational. And organizational pictures provide a useful structural framework for text content. Here's an example of a Venn diagram that's providing a useful structure to help us understand what could be described in text, but this visualization helps us understand where the overlaps are between these different characters from different alphabets. Now, a fourth function of pictures in text is interpretation. Now, the interpretational function helps to clarify difficult text. So here is a picture, obviously, of a human eye, and of course, it is labeling all of the different parts. So there's a close relationship here between the picture and the text. Now, all of this information could be conveyed simply via text. It would take a lot of text in order to explain all of this. And so this is an example of an interpretational function. And finally, we have the transformational function of a picture in text. And the transformational function simply includes some systematic mnemonic component to aid in recall. And so here you can see the lean mnemonic simply talks about which drugs should be used to lean on in case of an emergency. Lidocaine, epinephrine, atropine, and Narcan. And so those are five functions of pictures in text that we sometimes take for granted, but there's nuances to all of them. Now, in closing, I wanted to talk about concepts about graphics because as adults, we tend to forget all of the intricacies involved in making sense of visual representations. By revisiting some of these fundamental concepts about the relationships between text and images and what visual representations can and cannot do is valuable background information for us to draw upon as visual designers, whether or not we're designing for children. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.